This is Global Forum TV. In our new series today, India 2025, we bring you eminent personalities from India and share their vision, comments and opinions about what India would look like in 2025. This is your host, Amina Said. The mantra to understand India is to is Gandhi. Once you understand Gandhi, then you know the way out is there. If you are going to promote chauvinism of the majority, or what I call chauvinism of the majority, either through the BJP, the, the opposition party, Janata Party, or otherwise, through the one of its uh, ancillaries uh, of what is called the Sat Parivar, uh, you, you're going to atomize the Indian political scene. Drift is going to be in China. Okay. India will become, as far as some of the core issues of the world are concerned, the global laboratory. Income inequalities have never been more explosive than they are today. I mean, you know, this is an, it's always been an unequal and hierarchical society. India is a very stabilizing force. Indian history, Indian culture, and Indian population, Indian immigrants abroad, all this shows that India is an extraordinarily stabilizing force. Uh, with the capacity for integration. The whole world is looking at India as the, you know, the future of this entire globe. A great country, a proud country, but a country which under capitalism is unfortunately very much unequal. A country in which a part is the urban India and the rest is rural Bharat. Hello, welcome to Global Forum TV. A platform for global issues with global perspectives in today's global village. Uh, we continue with our series, uh, India 2025, in which we bring you eminent personalities from India and uh, they share their vision, their opinions and their views where India will be in 2025 when we uh, live in a multipolar world. Today we have one such enigmatic personality. Mr. Ardendu Bhushan Bardhan, General Secretary of the Communist Party of India. Welcome to Global Forum TV, Mr. Bardhan. Mr. Bardhan joined the Communist Party of India in 1941 and has been with the party since. That makes it 65 years of dedicated hard work for the party. He has served a total of four and a half years jail time for his resistance to the British colonial rule and his activities as trade unionist. He has served his country as an active politician and party member for all of his adult life. In 2004, Mr. Burton was one of the strategists who cobbled together a coalition of left and centrist parties headed by Sonia Gandhi, which came together in a stunning defeat to the ruling BJP, a right-wing Hindu fundamentalist party in power. Mr. Burton is a dedicated, humble worker and also camera shy. We bring him out of hibernation from the backstage to Global Forum TV. Welcome to Global Forum TV, Mr. Burton. We have a few questions to ask you about uh, India 2025. Uh, how do you see India on the world scene today? You see, it's the 60th year of our, we have completed 60 years of our independence. Obviously, we have gone, gone ahead. The India of 19, 2007 is not the India of 1947. There has been progress, though it is a very distorted progress, mm -hmm. very yes. uneven. Okay. I can speak later, you see, about all these matters. What is India's globalization strategy and where do you see it leading in 2025? If you ask me, if the present trend continues, then we will be in the American camp, mm -hmm. which of course we are opposing because we don't think that India should be a part of any imperialist gang up. Mm -hmm. We want India to be the head and the leader of the non-aligned movement, okay. carrying, carrying with it the other hundred countries and more, which are developing countries, countries of the third world, as they say. We have been the natural leader of this movement, mm -hmm. that we should continue. But even so, if you see this capitalist path of development, which is not development with social justice, which means only development you see for only a top layer of people, not for the entire mass of people in the country. 
a development you see in which the rural areas are left behind and only the urban areas go ahead. Mm -hmm. A development in which people become millionaires and billionaires and even trillionaires they say mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. A yes. few of them, a few of them. Yes. But the mass of the people are still, you see, living below the poverty line. Right. Those who are not exactly below the poverty line yet are very poor. Mm -hmm. And one of the latest reports has pointed out that about 78% or 80% of our people are poor. Right. So that is why I say, you see... We'll ask you that question a little bit ahead. Where will India be in 2025 in relation, in relation to superpower and regional powers? You see, the d days of superpowers are gone. After the Soviet Union collapsed, America thought, you see, that it is the sole superpower that is left in the world. It imposed and tried to impose, you see, a unila unilateral world in international politics. But it cannot sustain it. Many other countries have come up. Mm -hmm. China has come up. Even the European Union has its own contradictions, you see, with the US. India is growing up. Mm -hmm. I think, you see, in the days to come, it is the Asian continent towards which you see the center of gravity of world politics will shift. Mm -hmm. It was in Europe at one time. It went west and became the American center of gravity. Mm -hmm. From America, it is certainly going towards Asia now. Okay. And I see India and China as the leaders of this. Um, if we were to assume that by 2025, India, China, Russia, Brazil, Eastern uh, sorry, European Union and USA will be centers of power. What kind of uh, alliances and rifts do you see between them? No, my point is, you see, that if we are going to gang up with some imperialist power, mm -hmm. then I think, you see, India will find itself isolated from the rest of the world mm -hmm. in due course. After all, all these countries are not in the American camp. Right. As I said, even the European Union has its contradictions. About China, mm -hmm. it has. Let's it, say uh, Brazil uh, and Russia. Brazil. And the United States is there. Where do you see the alliances and where do you see the rift? I think you see that the most normal alliance which can take place will be a strategic partnership between India, mm -hmm. China, Brazil, okay. Russia. These are the countries of Asia and the surrounding regions. Mm -hmm. And I think, you see, with all their potential, they will play a very major role in world politics, okay. both in its economy, in its foreign policy, and generally, you see, in politics. What issues will define the relationship uh, between these countries, these, super po these powers, these emerging powers? Will it be water, oil, uh, population, market, or energy? You see, population, I don't think, is the main thing, but even though, China, India, Russia, Brazil, all these countries together, you see, will make up more than one-third of the world's population, much more than one-third of the world's population. So from the population point of view also, it's very important. From the geopolitical point of view also, this importance cannot be minimized. Mm -hmm. It's a question of sharing all these energy resources, not grabbing them only for your self-interest, right. okay. but sharing them, you see, in the interest of the masses, in the interest of the people. And the whole question of environment and ecology is becoming very important nowadays, mm -hmm. you see. So it will be very important to see that they are so shared mm -hmm. that these countries can meet the needs of the masses. Science and technology has developed to that extent. Okay. They should be able to. What will be India's major strength in 2025 in the global village? As I said, you see, it's talented people. Mm -hmm. It's geopolitical you see, character. I think all these are big contributions. Natural resources that we have. Provided all these are used, you see, in the interest of the people. As I said, you see, due to all these policies that have been followed up till now, there has been a very skewed development, a very distorted development. Disparities have increased. Right. That's my next question, actually. Despite the fact that India has a dynamic and growing a middle class, uh, something almost 300 million strong, there is an equally large underclass. Where do you see them in 2025? You see, the middle class also is not a very homogeneous body, as you are trying to say. Okay. There is a, a layer, a strata, you see, at the top, which would like to find itself, you see, in the affluent sections, mm -hmm. racing even perhaps for becoming billionaires.